Over time, the Google TV interface on your Sony television will build up various shelves of recommendations based on what you have watched and also your content preferences. This will clog up your memory and slow down your navigation at some point, especially over time. There is a way to enable what is called the apps only mode. To do that, what we're going to do is to go into the accounts and sign in sub menu, navigate to your account, and then we can enable apps only mode. And once you turn this on and we go back to the home screen, you will see that all these various shelves of recommendations have been removed and you are only limited to the apps, which is certainly more streamlined and provides a faster user experience. And while we are here, I'm going to show you how you can streamline these apps even further because what you want to do to be more efficient and to get to your favorite apps faster is to move your most used apps to the front and remove those that you don't use very often. So let's say I barely use television. If I long press on the icon, I can choose to move it to the back of the shelf. And then let's say if I watch Disney Plus very often, then I'll just move it to the front. And this way, you will be able to get to your favorite apps in a faster manner, increasing your navigation speed and efficiency. Next, what I'm going to show you is to enable what is called the last input power on behavior. So by default, when you switch on the television from cold boot, then it will default to the home screen, which adds another layer of unnecessary intrusion into what you want to watch. I prefer to set it to the last input, which means that when you switch on the television, it will always go to the last input that you watch. Hopefully it's on an HDMI port. You can also customize the quick settings menu to reduce the number of options so that you can get to the settings that you really need faster. So for example, let's say if you don't really need various sound modes because you are connected to an external speaker, then you can disable these and disable the sound settings. And once you do all this, you can close the menu and then you know you can get a leaner and cleaner quick settings menu that allows you to get to the settings that you really need without fuffing about. Despite limiting the Google TV home screen to apps only mode, there are still a number of background processes that are going on. To limit them, what we can do is to go into the privacy sub menu and turn off all these location status and Wi Fi location estimation transmission and then under usage and diagnostics again you know we can turn all this off to reduce the number of background processes and again under ads you know i'm really sorry to whoever is advertising but i don't really have time for your advertisement so i will try to opt out of the personalization to cut down on the data that is transmitted from this tv and reduce the number of background processes and then while we are here, we are going to go into the system sub menu and then go to storage. Now, even though we have limited the TV to only a few apps here and there, what we are going to do is to remove the cache data from time to time. And this will free up the storage and provide cleaner navigation. If you navigate into your apps, you can see that there is no Google Play Store for you to search for any apps. To create a shortcut, what you can do is to press the input button and then you can actually click on edit and add the Google Play Store and also the Google Play movies and TV. For some reason, they are only limited here. So once you select that, and the next time you want to access the Google Play Store, what you can do is to just press the input button on your remote control and click on Google Play Store, which will bring you straight there. There is a button labeled TV on the remote control that can allow you to go straight to an HDMI input of your choosing. So if I can 
go into settings and then go into channel and inputs and then you can select this TV button shortcut. You can choose to ask it to go straight to HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3, HDMI 4 or video when you press the button which can be quite handy if you are stuck somewhere and you just want to go straight to one of the HDMI inputs. I usually leave it on HDMI 4 because that's the one that I have my PS5 hooked up to the TV. Talking of which, if I wanted to engage game mode automatically in conjunction with the PS5, you can engage auto picture mode. What this will do is to simulate ALLM or auto load latency mode for the PlayStation consoles and if you enable it, it will automatically switch into game mode when playing games. And if you start playing, let's say a Blu-ray, it will switch to whatever picture mode that you were originally using. On the Google TV home screen, just press the back button on your remote control and you will start the ambient mode or the screensaver mode. Otherwise, you would have to go into the settings, go into system and then go into ambient mode to start it, which is much slower. Again, quite a hack to save some time. If you have done all this, that should be enough, but if you are that sort of person who goes into the supermarket to buy a carton of eggs off the shelf and check each and every egg to make sure none is broken, then there is an additional developer menu that you should be aware of. So navigate to the About submenu, go to the last line and then just press the OK button on your remote control about 7 or 8 times and this will unlock the developer mode. And after doing this, what you can do is to go into the developer options submenu, and then we can reduce the amount of background processes in terms of the number of processes running at one time. So maybe two to four would be a good one to make sure that your apps run as smoothly as possible. Once you've sped up the Sony Google TV interface, perhaps you would also like to learn how to boost your wired internet connection speed on your TV, which I will demonstrate and explain in this video.